Hello everyone, my name is Jocelyn. I use she, they pronouns, and I'm coming to you from my home here in the Blackstone Valley of Massachusetts, where I live with my two cats, Frog and Toad, and my partner, David. Welcome to All We Make Is Good. This is the Make Everything podcast, where I share mostly my knitting, uh, anything that I'm working on, anything that I've recently finished, But today is actually a little bit different because this is going to be a special episode dedicated to my weekend at Rhinebeck and sharing everything that I got up to over the last two days. Um, I went out there on Friday before. I didn't realize that there was actually a festival that went on on the Friday before Rhinebeck starts, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. That goes on Saturday, Sunday. I didn't realize that there was a whole extra day before that with uh, additional yarn festivals or fiber festivals. So next year I'm going to plan a little bit better and make sure that I get to attend that. So I got out there on Friday night and I'm just going to start putting in some footage um, that I took over the weekend. arrived at my Airbnb and look at how cute this little lamp is. Little coffee station. This is the cutest little place. Big bed space. I love it. So I'm actually not really sure what to do tonight. This is Friday night and Rhinebeck starts tomorrow morning. Um, I haven't done any research on restaurants in the area or anything to do with myself tonight, so time to go look something up and see what I can do tonight. Yeah, are you? So I am now back at my Airbnb after having spent entirely too much money on dinner and sweets from Samuel's Sweet Shop and I'm just going to catch up on some knitting podcasts and hopefully go to sleep early so that I can get to the fair tomorrow as early as possible. I have no idea what parking is going to be like and from what I've heard from the locals it's a nightmare so hopefully I can get there early enough to get a spot. (laughs) Um, I've blown pretty much my entire yarn budget on food just for tonight's dinner, but that's okay because I value food more than just about anything in life. So, but that's all right. We'll see what I find tomorrow and I'm hoping that I will find some cute stitch markers and some nice hand dyed yarns. I've already met a couple of other knitters that are going to the festival out on the streets walking around or at the restaurant that I went to or at the sweet shop even. So the streets are already flooded with knitters and that makes me so happy. With the oatmeal gray, uh, I did have to break into the third.
because I am uh, ridiculous, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and could not go back to sleep. There was a rooster crowing in the distance about every 30 minutes. And so I was just up and too excited to go back to sleep. So I waited for the first breakfast spot to open up and it turned, it was a, a little diner. I think it's a historic diner actually here in, it might've been in Red Hook, not Rhinebeck, but got myself some nice eggs Benedict, one of my favorite breakfast dishes. Um, met a couple of the vendors who came in to have breakfast as well. Um, and now I'm just waiting in the parking lot two hours early. I'm reclined <laughs> in my car and I'm just going to wait until they start selling tickets because I forgot to get mine early. So I need to get tickets as I go in. But I am here and I am ready. So I wanted to talk about my game plan for this weekend. I am expecting that I will not be coming home with any sweater quantities worth of yarns. Um, I know that already. I'm more looking for one-off kind of colorways that really speak to me and one in particular that I think a lot of dyers uh, make their own versions of and it's like a combination of like earthy primary colors that all kind of mix and blend together and give you a variation of like all of the colors but it doesn't feel like a rainbow I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen to more accurately um, show you what I mean. Um, and this is probably my favorite colorway of all of, like anything that I've seen so far from indie dyers. Um, anytime an indie dyer makes a colorway similar to this, I'm immediately in love. So that's what I am hoping to find today along with some really cute progress keepers um, stitch markers, things like that, uh, little notions and stuff that I can take home, more of like souvenir type things, um, because I have such a small budget for spending this weekend. Um, one of the other things that I do really hope to find is like some cute project bags, because the ones that I have are like reusable tote bags from uh, like chain stores and stuff like that. Um, so I'm hoping that I can find a really cute project bag and because I'm more of a monogamous knitter I'm only looking for one and I'm hoping that something really speaks to me today. Wow. <laughs> I just got finished with day one of Rhinebeck. Um, I'm 
relaxing for about five minutes in my car because that was a lot. It's just before 4 p.m. so I did not end up staying the entire day. Um, what a day. I went way over budget, um, which I pretty much expected. Uh, I did get four skeins of sock yarn um, and I'm very, very happy with all of them. I got some new needles because I didn't even have sock knitting needles. Uh, so that was my last purchase of the day was some new sock needles. And I'm probably just gonna go back to my Airbnb and hand wind one of the skeins and cast on a pair of socks. And tomorrow I probably won't do too much walking around. I'll probably do more sitting and knitting um, and hopefully meeting other knitters. Uh, I got to meet Knitty Natty today and uh, Andrea Mowry. I got to meet them and I'll show you guys some footage of the Alpenglow uh, pictures that they were all taking with her. It was it was impressive, the amount of people that came wearing the Alpenglow sweater and seeing all the collar combinations and seeing how excited everyone was to meet Andrew and Maori. I was a That was a mini celebrity meet right there. <laughs> it was really cool. Uh, I think they took a group photo today too with everyone that wore their Alpenglows. Um, I of course did not wear an Alpenglow, but and I did not get in on the group picture, but I got to meet Andrea Maori after that. Um, and Nitty Natty is literally the nicest person that I've probably ever met in my life. <laughs> and I met somebody else named Maddie as well. Uh, hi Maddie, if you're watching, <laughs> who does not have social media, <laughs> but I hope we can keep in touch somehow. Um, I just, I had one of the best days ever today and I'm really excited to come back tomorrow and I'm hoping tomorrow is a lot more low-key because today was really really packed it was pretty impossible to walk anywhere without bumping into somebody or just in general being in everybody else's space um, there was no such thing as personal space today it did not exist everyone was flooded. Every booth inside of those barns was flooded. Um, hang on, let me turn my camera around and show you the parking lot right now. And it, keep in mind it is four o'clock. This is the end of the day and look how busy it still is. I was one of the first handful of people to get here. I was here at about seven o'clock this morning. Uh, so seeing the parking lot now is insane. This is probably the largest gathering of people that I've ever seen in person. It's just blowing my mind and it makes me really happy that all of these people really care about the fiber arts because <laughs> it wasn't just knitting and crochet in there there was rug hooking there was you know tapestry there's looms for um weaving and there's just such a wide variety of people out there that have come to this event and it just the whole the whole thing just makes me very happy and i'm really glad i got to come I am back at my Airbnb and I wanted to show you what I am doing with the yarn that I got. I did not bring any knitting supplies whatsoever, so I have literally just put the skein around my feet and I am going to attempt to hand wind it off my feet. Day two, 
almost nobody here yet. And it's, I think, a little bit after 8 o'clock. Our leading uh, animal is that we also have a obstacle course demonstration later. hope you enjoyed seeing all of the footage that I was able to take this weekend. I didn't take any footage while I was walking through the booths because it was just too crowded and I didn't want to be filming in people's space and everything like that. Um, and I was just too caught up in all of the yarns and the things that people had in their booths. So I didn't take too much footage of that. But um, I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of how my weekend went. Uh, with the footage there. Um, so now I thought I would go through everything that I actually brought home from Rhinebeck since I didn't really show that <laughs> at all. Um, you might have seen there was a little clip of me winding up some of the yarn that I got and you can see the other skeins in the background. Um, I did pick up a fifth skein of sock yarn on Sunday when I went back um, and that was the only thing that I got on Sunday aside from an apple cider donut and hot apple cider with Hillary and Jamie which was lovely that was how we started our day um, after we ran to Miss Babs because I didn't realize they had an exclusive colorway for Rhinebeck until Saturday night when I got their email <laughs> but anyways let me go through everything that I got. And I will start with, I guess I'll just start with the yarns. Um, I got two, my first stop was Shirsty Cat. I 
love Shirsty Cat's uh, colorways. Um, and I'm only going to show you one. I'm going to save the other one until the end. Um, so this one is Key. I think that's how you say that. Key. And look at those beautiful colors, all of the purples and yellows and how they meld together. I love this skein. It's, I think this is so pretty. Oh, upside down. So Shirsty Cat, all of the sock yarns that I got um, were 75-25, Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. Um, this one's 462 yards per 100 grams. Let me show you. The next booth that I visited was extremely crowded and this actually isn't a company that I've heard of before, but look at this. This is just so stunning to me. I love speckled yarns. They're my absolute favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite is speckled yarns. And I think this is just so beautiful. <clears throat> so this is their shimmy base. Uh, the company is Dancing Leaf Dye Works. Uh, this is their shimmy base, which is the 75% merino, 25% nylon. Oh, it doesn't say super wash on it. Maybe it's not super wash. Well, that's kind of nice. I like that. Um, this is 463 yards per 100 grams. Wait a minute, that's yards. Oh, these are all in yards. I was expecting meters for some reason, even though they're... American companies. <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting meters. Um, anyway, so 463 yards in this. And this colorway, I believe, it's not written on here, but the sign above it said it was called Rhine Fleck. So I love that. The next one that I picked up is by Angora Online. Um, I think that's what the company name was. So this is another 7525, 462 yards per 100 grams. Look at that. Again, purpley yellow with speckles. I have a type. <laughs> um, I tried to ask the woman who was in the booth uh, what the colorway was, and she said she doesn't name her colorways, and she said, I think I only made one of those and took a picture before I left the booth with this, because she said she really liked it and she didn't want to forget it, because um, I think she only made one of these. There were other ones that were similar, but it was um, like bluish with yellow instead of this gorgeous purple. Why is it getting so dark? There we go. So instead of the dark purples, it was more blues and yellows with the speckled. So I think I got the only one of these. So that's pretty cool. And last but not least, oh no, I have one more after this. This was my Sunday purchase. I got everything else on Saturday. I had to get in the gate and sprint to Miss Babs to get the Harvest Plenty colorway. This is their Rhinebeck exclusive colorway. I got it on the Putnam sock base, so another 75-25. There was a different sock base. I think it was called Tarte, and it was... 75% superwash merino and then it had nylon and tenso or something like that um, but I just wanted to stick to the 7525 since I know that's very popular and these are all gonna be my first knitted socks on actual sock yarns so I'm so excited about this we literally we got through the gate and we all like power walked 
straight to Miss Babs. And by the time we got there, it was already crowded. And we literally were the first ones in the gate. So I don't know where all the rest of the people came from, but there were people shopping at Miss Babs. And they were all there for this colorway. <laughs> and it's like for good reason. This is such a beautiful colorway. <clears throat> I, I really can't wait to make socks out of this yarn. And finally, the last yarn that I got. And I'm showing it to you last because as you probably saw in the clips, I have already wound it up and cast on a pair of socks, Ooh, which are already tangled. This is another Shirsty Cat. I think this is so beautiful. I think this is so beautiful. I really can't even say anything else about it. It's just, it's so pretty. So this is Shirsty Cat. This is the same 7525. And this one is called Heart of the Giant. Heart of the Giant. And I think I actually saved this colorway on Instagram, like previously, when I saw her post about it. Um, it would have been a while ago now, I can't remember exactly, but I immediately cast it on. So originally, as you saw in the clip, I had hand wound it, and then I got home last night and I went to keep working on them, and I realized that they were just a touch too big. I cast on 64 stitches. And so I tried it on after I got a couple inches done. And it was just a tiny bit too big. So I took four stitches off and I started over. My preferred method for socks, this is how I learned. Um, if you've seen some of my previous episodes you'll have heard me talk about my friend Peggy um, who taught me how to knit socks and now the sun is right there <laughs> right there <laughs> um, and the book that she gave me um, to teach you how to knit socks was for two at a time and so that's just how I learned it and it's my preferred method now. Um, I really don't mind Magic Loop at all. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I'm so happy working on these. This gives me so much joy to work on these socks. This will be my first pair of hand knit socks on actual sock yarn and I'm so excited. I do have a free pattern for like bulky slipper socks that I made with like super chunky yarn. Um, so I don't really count that, but this counts. This to me counts. This makes me so happy. Um, okay, before I continue blubbering on about that. Oh, so I was saying I had hand wound this at the Airbnb and I got home and I had to rip it back and start over. So I was like, why don't I just use my ball winder and kind of put it in a nicer little cake so that it was easier to pull from the outside and from the center because that's what I'm doing. One sock is coming from the center and one sock is coming from the outside. And we will see how that goes. <laughs> I like my socks to be not tall but not shorties. I really can't stand shorties at all. Um, and I don't like it to be too, too tall. So like somewhere in the middle. Um, it's really funny to me how everyone likes their socks very differently. So, uh, and this is gonna be like a very vanilla sock. Um, I want to try, I usually do a slip stitch um, heel flap and uh, heel. What am I trying to say? <laughs> a heel turn? <laughs> I don't know the specific name. Heel flap and gusset. Um, for the heels, but I want to try German short rows this time. 
Um, and I'm just gonna wing it. I'm not using a pattern. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I got this little Miss Babs project bag, one of their small ones that they had in their booth. And that's what I'm keeping this project in. I think it's the perfect size. The cake fits nicely in the middle and then the needles just sit right on top. That is all I got for yarn. And then I got, <clears throat> excuse me, some buttons. I did get a lot of um, like knitting hardware stuff. So meaning I got some extra needle tips for my interchangeables and cable connectors and things like that, but I don't really feel like I need to show you. Um, the Those are 47 inch circular needles, uh, US2 chow goos, and I did buy those at the fair so that I could cast on the socks that night because I did not have sock needles. Although when I once I cast them on, I realized that I could probably just make those. I think my interchangeable set has US2 in them and it has a 40 inch cable. So now that I like after I cast them on, I thought about it. I was like, I probably could have just made sock needles with my interchangeables. But then that would have taken up one of my my largest cable, which is actually on a whip right now. So anyways, this worked out perfectly. This is going to be my dedicated sock needle. Um, I think that's everything out of this bag. Yeah. So I got some buttons. And these are for my current whip. Oh, there's something sticky on it. Probably because everybody had their hands all over these buttons at this booth. Um, I think these are beautiful. They're kind of plain and simple wooden buttons. I'm trying to show you. The sun is right there. <laughs> so I love these. These are going to go on the cardigan that I'm working on. Cardigan coat. I don't really know exactly what it is, um, but you can see that in my last podcast episode. I also got so that's five of those. I got six of these. I think I actually just prefer six buttons. I don't know why. I think I just like the even number. But anyways, uh, I got six of these. And these are handmade buttons. And the woman at the booth, these were two separate button booths. Um, the woman at the booth said that she had this on like tissue paper. It was like painted on tissue paper. And then she layered it on top of pieces of coconut husk. Come on, focus. So you can see all the backs right there in the bag. And then let me just show you. Because I think all of the buttons are different, but they all have the same. How do I spread these out so I can show you? They're so pretty. I really can't wait to use these. I have no idea what I'm going to put them in, but I'm very excited to use these. My babies are yelling. I was, so I was gone all weekend and when I came back, Frog would not leave my side. And I can tell that that's Toad meowing now for attention because I've apparently been up here too long by myself without them. <laughs> um, but these are the last few buttons that I got. Um, this one, focus. This is just, I think it's just like pearlescent. And then these other three are also, these are like the darker pearlescent buttons that I could find. more of like novelty buttons and I think I'll just use them as like little accents here or there um, where I can. So I got three of them that are, I'll just hold it back here, three of them that are this size and I only found one that was larger. So <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to do with only three buttons, but I'll figure something out. The 
those are all of the buttons that I got. And then I did get, I stopped at a booth, um, which is actually next to the big button booth, uh, one of them. And the woman in the booth did uh, rug hooking and I'd never seen such intricate rugs. It, it was so beautiful. So I actually got her book um, instead of one of the kits or the patterns because the one that I wanted was uh, fairly large. I think it was three by four feet. Um, and it was like a cave painting of a horse in rug hooking. And it was so, so beautiful. Um, she was nice enough. She even signed, signed my book. Um, but she said that that rug itself was probably about $3,800 or something or $3,600. And the kit was also, it wasn't a kit. It was, um, the pattern. So she had it drawn out onto, um, the fabric that she does the rug hooking on. And that was also a little expensive. Um, so I went with the book and I figure I will use this for all of my inspiration, try to come up with my own patterns based on what she's done. She told me that um, the requirement for this book was 200 pictures and she sent in 600. So <laughs> there's plenty of references in here to make some beautiful rugs. Oh, look at that. I think that's so pretty. A lot of these are like historic rugs. Um, I, I'm so excited. Now I have to pick up rug hooking. How lovely. Um, I think that's everything that I got as far as crafty business is involved. I did get some dip packets and what was the other thing I got? Oh, loose leaf tea. Um, so there was a, a large barn that had two levels and the lower level was actually like artisan, like food stuffs. Um, and they had some wines and beers and things like that in there as well. And so walking around, I found a booth that was doing dip packets and she had all of her dips already made and she had little pretzel sticks out so you could sample all of the dips. <sighs> oh. They were so good. I bought five packets. There are five different ones. Um, there was a bacon onion. There was a balsamic four onion. There was Asiago artichoke something. Spinach parm. Oh, I'm going to forget the last one. I forget the last one, but I'll put it somewhere. I'll put it in the description box. Um, the five dips that I got and the company's name. I'll have links to all of these places uh, in the description box. And then the other booth that I stopped at in the artisan food uh, section of the festival, I got some loose leaf tea and I got some sencha green tea because I can almost never find that for some reason. Not that I really tried that hard, but it was right there and it's my favorite green tea. So I had to get some. And that is everything that I came home with. Um, I went to some really excellent restaurants while I was out there. The first one that I went to, um, Friday night when I got there, I was recommended to go to Terrapin. I hope that's how you say it. Um, and I got there and I went into the bistro side and I was like, what's the wait like for one person? And she was like, uh, at least an hour. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else. And so I walked across the street and I went to, I think it's Gigi's. Um, and I sat there right at the bar and sat down right away and I ordered my dinner there. I got the cowboy ribeye steak, which was fantastic. And it came with fries and on the menu it came with broccolini, but I asked if I could have uh, the Brussels sprouts instead. And so they did that for me. <laughs> And then the next day when I went in for Rhinebeck, I realized that they had a stand for Brussels sprouts with garlic aioli. So I had Brussels sprouts two days in a row, um, which was delicious. 
Uh, the second night I did manage to get into Terrapin, um, and I had the spinach and artichoke dip with goat cheese, and they also had drunken shrimp on their appetizer list, and I'd never heard of it. Wow. If you've never had drunken shrimp, you should try drunken shrimp. It's so delicious. They served it with bread that you could dip into like this, it's like a very thick garlicky sauce. I don't know what's in it. I have no idea what's in it, but it's so delicious. And then I got one little lamb chop <laughs> and that was my dinner. I had some of the autumn sangria that was a seasonal drink there. Um, there was a woman sitting next to me with her daughter and we ended up talking for like 30 minutes it must have been. I probably just talked your ear off the whole night. Um, and we were talking about the Sheep and Wool Festival, so I think they ended up going um, to the festival the next day, and I think her daughter actually even was convinced to try knitting <laughs> after I was done talking. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I am going to wrap it up because my throat is getting a little bit hoarse. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from being sick. Um, but just in the fact that my throat still gets a little bit hoarse after talking for too long. Um, I had the most amazing time going to Rhinebeck, and I'm absolutely going to go next year. I'm going to plan it a little bit better and book ahead of time and see if I can get um, reservations somewhere that's a little bit closer to the festival itself, um, maybe even within walking distance. I think there were a couple of... Um, hotels or inns that were close enough to walk in. Um, I'm going to buy my tickets more in advance than the day of. <laughs> um, and I'm going to plan to get there uh, so that I can go to all of the festivals that start on the Friday before um, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. So all of those plans for next year. I think I am actually going to meet up with Hillary and Jamie next year. I hope. Um, hopefully we can keep in touch until then and plan something out so we can all go together again. That was so fun. It just happened to be that they were behind me in line the very first day and we had jumped in line like 30 minutes early or something before the gates opened and we just stayed there chatting the whole 30 minutes. It was just so natural. It just happened. And then we spent uh, the morning together until I lost them at one point. <laughs> so I went through the rest of the first day by myself, which was totally fine. I love doing that anyways. Um, but then I did catch up with them again the next day and we hung out until they had to make their commute home because they are from Canada and that was an eight hour drive for them. So it was only about a three hour drive for me. So I left a little bit later. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, really glad that I got to go this year and I got to share everything that I experienced this weekend. Um, if you did not make it this past weekend, I hope beyond hope that you're able to make it next year because it is definitely an experience that you would want to have. Um, the crowds are quite large uh, and that is something to kind of mentally prepare for. Um, but the experience itself of going is amazing and I highly recommend it if you can manage to make it at some point, um, to go to Rhinebeck. Here I am saying I'm going to wrap it up and I still have more things to talk about. <laughs> I met a woman inside one of the sheep barns who is actually starting her own breed. It's called the Ellis Hollow Sheep Breed and she was telling me that, uh, one of her... One of her sheep had a lamb that had a, a different coloration when it was born and then when that sheep had more lambs it kept the coloration kept going and she said that they're extremely easygoing sheep they're very gentle demeanor and i did notice that that was like the first thing that i noticed oh the sun's about to come out no what happened to the rain <laughs> um Sorry about this lighting. Um, but yeah, the sheep were just the gentlest thing ever. And they were very pretty. They were very um, 
like a medium brown and then they had like white down the chin and the belly and some like black areas around the ears and such they were very pretty sheep um so i wish her all the luck with <laughs> her ellis hollow sheep um which are named after her farm where she breeds them and with that i think i have talked about everything that i can possibly talk about for rhinebeck although i'm sure i could find more things but I will leave it there. If you would like to keep following along with this Make Everything podcast, please feel free to subscribe. Give the video a like if you enjoyed this. You can also find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as All We Make Is Good. And as always, all of the um, information that I shared here in this video will be linked in the description box. To the best of my ability, I will put links to people's websites and things like that. Uh, anything helpful that I think could come out of this video, I will put in the description box. So thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I hope you have a good rest of your evening, week, wherever you are. Have a good one. Bye.